हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल माई नेम इज कृष्णा एंड टूडे वी हैव डॉक्टर अमरेंद्र पांडे सर एंड ही इज़ फ्रॉम बिहार बट ही इज़ लिविंग हियर सिंस थर्टी फाइव ईयर्स एंड सर हैज डिड हिज स्कूल फ्रॉम के वी एस एंड देन ही डिड हिज मास्टर एंड पी एच डी फ्रॉम एम एस यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ बड़ोडा सो टूडे आई फील वेरी प्राउड बिकॉज आई वंस आई वॉज अ स्टूडेंट ऑफ एम एस यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ वडोदरा सो सर वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड या सो लेट स्टार्ट अवर इंटरव्यू सो सर माई फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज हाउ वॉज योर जर्नी फ्रॉम student to professor yeah i i started my education in 1988 uh, uh when i started at that time i was in calcutta because my father was in air force and for first two years um, i studied in calcutta and then i came to baroda uh, in 1989 and since then we have been living in baroda now it's 35 years and i am now a resident domiciled resident of gujarat uh i did uh, my ssc from cbsc and then hsc from gujarat uh, state board i entered uh, into the university in 2000 uh, ms university of baroda in english department mm. and uh, came out in 2005 with masters degree then i again enrolled in the phd program in the same department in late 2007 and obtained my phd in 2017 uh, uh the journey from school to college uh, was not uh, remarkable in any way in the sense ki it's like a very regular school education like whatever student do in the school life you know you study you participate in uh, different activities uh, I didn't participate much in sports but I uh, did participate in extracurricular activities and all that. So that was very interesting and I was very keen um, uh, in reading texts especially uh, Hindi literature and uh, social sciences history. I used to like history a lot. Um then I did uh, uh, HSC uh, in science but uh, I didn't like that at all. so in the graduation my brother suggested me to take uh, english literature i uh, i enrolled into it and i really liked it and uh, when i was in ma i uh, got some teachers who inspired me to think of a profession in teaching, teaching. Uh, university teaching and that's how i decided that i'll do um, this lecturership mm-hmm. and uh, yeah uh, first three first two years of university education was i was trying to figure out what i really like but by third year i was pretty sure that i want to do an ma and in in ma i started liking everything i was doing academically and then uh, just after completing uh, ma uh, i was able to clear my net examination so it was a path opened up for me to to be a teacher in higher education and that's where i am now yeah. so far it has been an interesting journey yeah. so as sir has told that his journey is very nice and uh, he is enjoying being uh, as a professor so my next question is uh, what do you think about literature and uh, do you think that uh, uh, literature is a mirror of uh, society it is a very traditional definition that literature is a mirror of society yeah. literature reflects society yeah. uh it is true to an extent that ki whatever we see in literature many things writers uh, writers take many thing from real life but to say that it is a mirror of society is uh, um i guess is a state is an overstatement it's not that ki whatever is happening in society is getting reflected in literature no yeah. uh, it's a it's a combination of uh, what's there in reality and the imagination of the writer right so uh, any writer will pick up things issues dialogues words vocabularies and uh, and then add color of his or her imagination to conjure another world for the reader you know so you will find the elements of 
social life, social reality, but uh, if a, if literature is the reflection of society then it will become a journalism or a propaganda you yes. know which is literature is not a propaganda it's not a journalism you know? reflecting the spirit of the society reality of the society it's the task of the journalist not literature literature will look at the society writer will be uh, writer is a part of society uh, he or she will look at society from within and then they go out of the society to look at it from outside and then reflect on it and then comment on that and they do their commentary through uh, plot through characters they will have uh, an imaginary plot ima imaginary characters who will be inspired from real life but not everything um, uh, from real life there will be added color of imagination and that's what makes literature interesting uh, the kind of reality we live if we see the same in literature or say even in cinema we are not we don't really like it mm -hmm. and we like cinema because it gives us more than our reality mm -hmm. uh, it, it allows it allows us to imagine a, a, a wider canvas for us uh, that's what uh, literature also does uh, so uh, so i'll say that literature uh, does reflect society but it's not a mirror to society, to society. yeah so, sir, my next question is that uh, what do you think about books and uh, films like uh, and uh, which is your uh, favorite uh, fictional book? Yeah. Uh, I, uh, being a teacher and being a student of literature, books uh, are the primary love of my life. Yes. I do watch uh, cinema uh, but uh, of late uh, I'll say for uh, from last five six years I have stopped watching a lot of cinema yeah. uh, somehow um, looking at visuals uh, um, continuously uh, I find it very hard mm -hmm. uh, words on a page or written words uh, attracts me more whether they are in the form of books or say uh, printed words on Kindle or uh, even uh, mobile mm -hmm. and uh, Google Books and all that uh, they uh, I'm attracted more to them so I like fiction a lot uh, I in I used to enjoy films a lot at some point of time but of late I have not uh, I'm not uh, really interested in you know investing three hours uh, in two hours or three hours in watching a continuous uh, uh, film mm -hmm. I'll, I, I can um, listen to uh, long podcasts that's not a problem yeah. but to sit in one place and look at the visual or narrative uh, it's becoming difficult i'll rather uh, prefer to read a book yeah so sir my next question is do you feel bad when someone says that movie is better than a book uh, no i'll not say that uh, because I guess those who say that a movie is a better than a book, they may have their own reason. But uh, whatever movies I have seen, uh, uh, which are adaptations of film uh, texts, uh, I have always found books to be more gripping. Uh, one reason is uh, book has a lot of scope. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, there is no though no limitation on number of words number of pages uh, as far as a novel or a fiction is concerned but in cinema we know that it is confined to say th two hours three hours to uh, say uh, uh, let me give you an example say if you read Tolstoy's Anna Karenina it's around thousand page novel now how are you going to compress that thousand page novel into a film of say 120 minutes two hour film it's impossible it's impossible uh, so that that film there are many versions of Anna Karenina and uh, whatever I have seen um, I have I, I find that they just rush from one event to another event one scene to another see, uh, scene and there's no coherent plot structure in the movie and I I understand the problem because Anna Karenina is a very complex novel Tolstoy has taken great 
केयर इन लेइंग आउट द प्लॉट एवरी सिंगल थिंग इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट येस इट इज़ अ प्रोपोकेंड लाइक वन ऑफ द कैरेक्टर इज अ माउथ पीस ऑफ द राइटर बट दैट्स हाउ द हाउ नॉवल्स यूज टू बी रिटन इन दोज टाइम स्पेशली टॉल स्टॉय एन नॉवल है ना सो लाइक दोज हु बिलीव दैट अ मूवी इज़ बेटर दैन अ टेक्स दे मे हैव देयर ओन रीजन मे बी कि दे आर एबल टू गेट एवरी थिंग विद इन नाइन्टी मिनट्स और हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी मिनट्स बट फॉर मी डिटेलिंग इज मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट एंड आई फाइंड डिटेलिंग इन वर्ड्स रिटर्न वर्ड्स मच मोर रिचर दैन वॉट आई कैन सी विजुअली इन अ फ्रेम ऑफ से वन सेकेंड और फाइव सेकेंड और टेन सेकेंड इफ आई हैव टू गिव एन एग्जाम्पल देर इज अ बुक इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ एन उर्दू नावल द इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन इज कॉल्ड द मिरर ऑफ ब्यूटी नाउ इन दैट नावल रूम a room is being described a small room is being described and that description of the room goes into 5 to 7 pages now that is a power of that that is the power of description and that description allows me to really uh, visualize that room in my own mind so it 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 challenges me to imagine can i see that room whereas the film in the film uh, that room camera will pan out uh, 360 degree into the room within 2 to 3 seconds and everything can be seen but it's not challenging my imagination it's telling me this is how it is whereas the written word is challenging me and allowing me to form my own image mm-hmm. of the room yeah. and that's what i really like about uh, fiction fiction so sir my next question is what do you think about women's writing in literature Uh, now uh women's writing as we understand in academic terms ki like um, there are courses on women's writing yes. these are recent phenomena means they are not more than 3 to 4 decades old mm-hmm. and uh, women's writing women's movement uh, women's writing uh, inclusion of courses on women's writing is a result of very long struggle um of women's movement feminist movements across the world not only in india but across the world yeah. uh because women's writing was there it was always there uh, it's only that nobody was uh, recognizing it we understand that the world mostly was a patriarchal world especially educated yeah. world yeah. and uh, women everywhere had to fight a lot uh either to get educated or or uh, to write right. and uh, we know that uh, in uh, in the medieval and early modern ages in europe itself women yeah. used to write and they used to hide their writing oh. and those who uh, gather uh, strength enough to send it to publisher they used to do it uh, under the male oh, pen name yeah right yeah. so that was the kind of restriction which they faced mm-hmm. and that allowed uh, uh, but but what is fascination uh, f- fascinating uh, in this history is that they they kept on writing you know with all the pressures all the problems all the fear that they kept on writing and writing and writing and it took centuries but they eventually got their themselves heard and recognized by everyone in the world and uh, uh, and in india um, i'll uh, i'll uh, i'll suggest that uh, there are two volumes it's called uh, india um, women's writing in india from 600 bc to the current time so in india we have the records of women writing 600 before christ so we are talking about available writing of 2600 years and these are all writing by women so to say that women were not educated they didn't uh, uh, they didn't used to read or write it's a it's a wrong assumption and we have evidence for that so when i look at women's writing i look at not only the text in front of me but i also look at it as a culmination of a long long struggle it's a centuries old struggle yeah. and i i enjoy teaching uh, uh, women's writing uh, course uh, and novels because uh, it's very different a uh, women's writers narrative is very very different from a male writers uh, narrative mm-hmm. it's a question of gaze mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it will be a fo- it will be foolhardy to say that oh a male can write about 
female experiences female can write about male experiences i don't uh, really buy into it of course they can but women uh, telling women's stories is far more compelling that's what i have understood uh, uh, till now so as sir has told then uh, right now also we are fighting for our rights and like uh, yeah the situation is uh, changed now but still we have to fight and we have to prove everyone that uh, uh, we can uh, do this and do this yeah so my next question is that uh, what are your thoughts about uh, gandhian philosophy as you are uh, here since uh, 2011 so like uh, tell us about your uh, thoughts about gandhian philosophy yeah. uh, my first encounter uh, with uh, gandhi was uh, in school when i uh, read some parts of the autobiography uh, uh, i read it like a lesson nothing more nothing less mm-hmm. but when i was a postgraduate student i uh, we had to seriously engage with uh, gandhi and swaraj as a part of one course which was politics ideology and the teaching of english in india uh, so i did uh, uh, that uh, text uh, in detail at the postgraduate level but later on i worked uh, in a private college for 5 years where uh, not much was happening in terms of uh, uh, gandhi and literature or anything like that but when i joined uh, here in vidyapeet in 2011 this is a this is a university founded by gandhi in 1920 yeah. so uh, um talks on gandhi thoughts on gandhi books on gandhi books of gandhi is lying was lying all around and i started reading it very uh, seriously and also uh, in 2011 our chancellor was narayan bhai desai and um, um i got a chance to interact with him in a workshop in a 10 day workshop of gujarat vidyapeeth's teachers in the summer of 2012 and his lectures he used to give a daily lecture his lectures allowed me to uh, look at gandhi as a person and as a thinker and not as a mahatma and that helped me to start reading gandhi in a new light and i did that and once i started reading gandhi in a new light his writings then i got very interested and i understood that this person is saying something very very important it was so important and so radically different from uh, people of his time that uh, his books were uh, rejected as useless and uh, uh, so uh, i i started reading him carefully and i could understand that why people like say Uh, gokhale or uh, later on patel or nehru had lot of problems with him because he was so radically different from uh, most of the thinkers of his time yeah. that his his ideas and his books were considered to be you know old fashion whereas i uh, found them profoundly uh, influential in the sense that it was a philosophical text in the most radical kind of way because it questioned the prevalent notions of the time and that's what a good philosophical text should do you whatever is being accepted whatever is taken as a given as a fact if you challenge that and you give reasons for ch- that challenge and you present an alternative vision then that's philosophy and that's what i believe gandhi did uh, of course many people says that he is not a proper philosopher of course he was not a proper philosopher but it doesn't take away the philosophical nature of his reflections on society of his time uh yeah sir so my next question is if someone like me likes to read book uh, sorry books uh, should they take this literature as a subject uh, uh no uh in order to um, make yourself interested in fiction you don't need to do a course in uh, literature you know uh, i know many people who have never did any course in literature and they are far 
better literary uh, readers readers when i'm saying readers like i'm saying they read literature not only for uh, mere pleasure but they seriously engage with the text and they can have conversations mm-hmm. Uh, around that text in more profound manner than many academics uh, of english literature so it's not um, um, it's not a question ki whether one should become a student to read literature the thing is you must enjoy reading literature fiction drama poetry short story novel whatever you like you must uh, if you are interested you start reading and you start from simple simple text to complicated text and uh, like wherever your interest takes you and i'm not saying that you should read serious literature you read whatever literature you like you read you start with detective stories crime fiction say agatha christie then go on to say uh, uh, arthur conan doyle and so on so forth then you go to uh, serious literature whatever you you believe to be serious literature uh, if you enjoy that's enough that's the first purpose of literature to enjoy and once you start enjoying maybe you will engage with the text in more rigorous manner but do not uh, uh, think of reading literature to seriously engage first read for pleasure see whether you like it or not if you like it then engage with it yeah so i asked this question because i made this mistake th- uh, that's why i am asking because uh, since my uh, schooling i uh, used to like uh, to read and uh, i thought that i will uh, go with literature and i have lot of fun in uh, master of ed- uh, sorry l- l- english literature but uh, there there was no fun and uh, like uh, i have to be like uh, and i i was not uh, enjoy the journey and uh, i uh, gave up on this literature so that's why i asked this question uh, sir so my next and last question is uh, that uh, is phd is uh, boring or lengthy and uh, uh, what is your experience yeah. uh, uh i can answer this question in two ways first is a practical way ki somebody who wants to build a career in higher education to become a teacher in higher education phd is a requirement so uh, it's a practical thing to do phd if you are really interested in teaching at the university college level university level that's a requirement and uh, the second is linked to the first but uh, somehow uh, we see it um, differently i don't know why but Well, many people see it differently uh one should do research let me be uh, romantic for a moment and let me put it in this way you should do phd when you are so troubled by your research question that you cannot sleep yeah but you if, if you can sleep peacefully leave aside research you don't need to do it yeah. you know that research question which troubles you 24 hours a day that is the question which you must attempt and you will not require yourself to motivate yourself to follow that you know it troubles you so much that you are forced to find an answer you know yeah. so that's that's the romantic bit ki achhi neend aati hai to mat karo research but if you are troubled by the question then do research you know research will you know hold you by hand and you it will take you through through the entire process but uh, it's more romantic coming to prosaic answer it is a boring process research is a boring process because you are looking at one question and you are trying to find an answer in the maze of answers because you have to look at uh, all the available literature most of the available literature and then you have to see what what is that which you want to say new you know yeah. what is it which what is your contribution to this knowledge uh, which is existing knowledge if you are going to repeat it it's going to be very very boring and and if somebody ask you ki okay uh, this has already been said so what is that which you are adding to this existing knowledge you may not have an answer and then it becomes very dispiriting and even more boring right the only way to overcome this boringness is to you know be 
if you are not thrilled by your question then make yourself thrilled yeah. by by external stimulus when i'm saying stimuli uh, i'm trying to say that you must talk about it more and more hmm. with people around you you know with fellow students fellow researchers teachers you go and talk to everybody about your uh, research yeah their poking their questions their comments will help you in furthering your research you know don't believe that if somebody says ki ye kya bakwas hai ki that person doesn't like but use that okay i am writing something which doesn't make sense it means that i have to make it clearer so so if you are not ready to work hard it's going to be very very boring you know and you will end up leaving the research you know so my suggestion will be a lot of reading and willingness to work hard you know uh, you cannot take a break from reading yeah. you can take a break for writing but that should be for uh, days not for weeks and months and uh, and it's very ironical that i am saying it because i took 8 years to complete my phd but i want to say that i had a full time job yeah out of which uh, out of 8 years in 5 for 5 years i was working in a private college where i used to work around 8 to 10 hours every day and by the end of the day i had no energy left to concentrate on my research work you know but the moment i decided ki i must finish it i was able to complete the entire writing within one year you know so it's it's that 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 encouragement that self belief and motivation and it's for also the uh, the guide who right. who gave me a deadline ki this is this is last 6 months either you do it or i'll throw you out kar ke <laughs> which pushed me to do that yeah. right yeah. so uh, so 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 i want to say it out loud and clear that uh, find some motivation find someone who will motivate you keep on motivating you you know who will surround yourself with people who ask questions to you on your topic yeah. so that you are forced to answer find find answer and right answer for that yeah. yeah yes it is a boring process and you have to make it interesting so sir uh, thank you so much for this uh, interview and i feel very nervous happy and <laughs> anxious but yeah sir thank you and this uh, credit goes to your student because some of your student has told me that uh, you can take uh, 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 pandey sir's interview that's why i am taking and uh, some of your student has demand that uh, you speak gujarati very nice so you can uh, speak some sentence in gujarati like uh, whatever in your mind no uh, uh, they must have told you only because look gujarati is not my first language yeah my first right. language is yeah. my first language is bhojpuri second language is hindi yeah. third language is english fourth language is gujarati which uh, which i acquired um, um after coming to gujarat vidyapeet yeah. because uh, understand i come from a defense uh, background yeah. where i was surrounded by people from different parts of india and hindi was the lingua franca then i studied in kendra vidyalaya again the medium was hindi mostly yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then in ms Un- department of english ms university of baroda the atmosphere was english yeah. so i was not forced to learn gujarati because i didn't require it during that time yeah. but when i joined uh, when i started working even in my previous job uh, uh, ch- students used to come from rural background tribal background so i started picking up the language from them interacting with them uh, serious uh, attention uh, i paid serious attention to gujarati um, uh, when i joined vidya pet because i had to appear in an exam and pass the exam oh. so uh, i also uh, converted myself into a student of gujarati for six uh, for one year six month to one year yeah. and whatever uh, and i know that my gujarati is not good yeah. that means i i cannot deliver a uh, uh, one hour lecture in gujarati uh, it's like saying that i i tell my students ki my gujarati is as good as your hindi or your english <laughs> yeah. so we are at the same level of 
mistakes and we make same kind of mistakes and errors but the only difference between you and me is that i am not ashamed of speaking in gujarati realize knowing that i am speaking wrong grammatically wrong gujarati but i am proud of it because i am able to communicate put my point across that's it language is for communication yes. grammatically correct or incorrect English. but yes because i am a teacher of english so i sh- i make an effort to ensure that i whatever i put out especially in writing it yeah. must be correct correct yeah right yeah. but for gujarati i am not really concerned whether i am speaking correctly gujarati correct gujarati or not i just enjoy and i enjoy making mistakes um, and it's a sad thing but i am not really um, um, ashamed of that ki yeah. i don't really pay lot of attention to yeah. grammar in gujarati for me it's a fourth language and it's a language of convenience you yeah. know yeah. yeah so all those students uh, who have told you about me yeah. uh, to them i'll say ki bhai logo tumhe to angrezi nahi sikha pan hu etlu angrezi gujarati to sikhi gaya ki koi sathe hu baat kari saku ha loko zarur mane pakdi leche ki aa bhai gujarati nahi ane mane kai pan de ki bhai tumhe to gujarati nahi tumhe kya na cho <laughs> तो पी मैं जवाब आप पड़े कि आधार कार्ड में हूँ गुजराती छूँ और जन्म थी हूँ बिहारी छूँ और मैंने एना जराय शरम नहीं है ना गुजराती खोटी होके हूँ गुजराती छूँ साथ बिहारी छू थैंक यू ओके थैंक यू सो मच सर